Field day 2022 is over. How did you do? We're going to hot wash the performance at my station in this video. Stick around. Black one, black one. A few late changes affected my plans pretty significantly. There wasn't going to be a club that I was going to join for operation. I opted to have a personal challenge that I would attempt to overcome instead. I focused on power management, and that meant that I was going to run a low power operation. I made four decisions as part of this personal challenge for this year's operation. The first, it was going to be a single operator. I was not going to be working around the clock. The second was that I was going to be operating on emergency power only. The third is that I would use one transmitter and that I would work at five watts only. Finally, I would use digital only. We'll talk about each of these in just a bit more detail. So first decision, one operator, no round the clock operation. I had things to do and I couldn't dedicate the entire 27 hours or even a 24 hour block. And so I just decided not to try. I decided to focus my activity on things that I specifically wanted to accomplish, things that I had less experience in doing than I get in my normal day to day operation. Running emergency power only would be an interesting challenge. I have used emergency power many times, and of course I have done that even for field day. But for this, running the entire operation strictly with emergency power would be a bit of a twist. I had two batteries that I could be using. One is a small 8 amp hour battery, and then the larger was a deep cycle battery that would give significantly uh, greater runtime. These were backed by a solar panel, the flexible solar panel that I have used in many conditions. In this case, I just found a spot on the roof where I would be able to put that solar panel. The solar panel has a trickle charger on it so that I wouldn't run the risk of overcharging a battery. So what I did was made sure that my batteries were able to tie into my power supply so I could just turn the switch off and I would not have any AC power. I would be running everything from the battery and that I would have the solar panel on a trickle charger actually feeding into the battery when there was opportunity to do so. The single transmitter that I was using was set for 5 watts. It's just a normal rig, my regular everyday FT450D, nothing special. I went to the rig's RF power setting and I set it specifically for 5 watts. I have two antenna systems, a 135 foot OCF, that's an off center fed dipole. The second antenna is an A99 vertical. So both of those antennas would feed into a tuner so that I would be able to switch between the antenna systems depending on whether I wanted to be on the dipole or on the vertical, which I have cut to be resonant at 10 meters. I also decided to run digital only. In previous years, I have been a CW operator. I've also been a voice operator, and I've done a little bit of digital, but I decided as a challenge, I would make everything all digital, no other mode. This would fit very well with the particular operating decisions I'd made up to this point. In particular, digital works very well in low power conditions or where the signal is just generally weak. And so that seemed like it would make sense. And also FT8 now has a field day exchange specifically, and I wanted to try that out. So I thought that that was a good combination of variables. So how did I do? Well, on Saturday, I ran for about three hours. I actually started uh, somewhere around four or so in the afternoon. Uh, I was helping somebody else to get a station up and running. And so I ran until it was time for me to uh, put in the service as the grill operator. Dinner was also low power and off grid. We ran a gas grill. In that three hours that I was operating on Saturday, I made about 20 contacts, and then after dinner I had radio work to do, but it was on another service, so I was separate from the field day exercise. 
On Sunday, I ran for about eight hours off and on, and I had some other things to handle in there. So I would uh, work the field day uh, for a while, and then I would take care of something, come back to field day. In that time, I was able to make another 80 or so contacts. Thanks to all of the other operators who were out there, all of the stations that were part of field day, it made it possible for me to make contact with them. I worked a few that I knew, which is always a great thing to see, and I also was able to make contact with several stations on multiple bands, which was pretty cool as well. So by the numbers, how did I do? I had 106 unique contacts with the station plus band combination. All of them were FT8, which means that each of them was worth two points. Because all of the contacts were at 5 watts, I was also able to secure the power multiple. I got the bonus for 100% emergency power operation. I was able to get the bonus for alternate power operation because I was recharging with the solar panels. I got the bonus for receiving the AWRL W1AW bulletin, which I got digitally. I'm going to be claiming the bonus for web submission. I'll be submitting that in a digital log. And, of course, the social media bonus. Caffeinate. Hydrate. Radiate. Have a great field day, everybody. And that brings me to a total of 1,510 points. Not bad for about 10 hours worth of operation, 11 hours worth of operation during the course of field day with a single operator using low power. A few things that I took away from the operation was that low power can be very difficult. Running at 5 watts, even with FT8, can be a challenge. What I found is that while I was running, sometimes I would be okay with a particular part of the band where I was transmitting. And the way that I run FT8 is I find a transmission slot, a place on the spectrum, and I keep transmitting there. So when I'm responding to somebody, I keep transmitting on the little slice that I have taken for myself. When running low power, it's very easy for other stations that wish to operate not to hear you, which means that I would be running for a while, somebody else would come on there, a much stronger station, and start transmitting over top of me. So I had to move around a little bit to keep on a clear space for my transmissions, but I was able to work pretty consistently, so I was happy about that. I was able to run on the emergency power. I didn't have any issues. And in fact, I was still running for another 12 hours or so off of the battery. From my perspective, it was a successful field day. I didn't go for a record in the number of points. I didn't try to hit every single objective. And in fact, it was a much more simple operation than what I'm accustomed to when I'm working a multi-transmitter site with a team of people that were trying to cover as many of the objectives as possible. So it was successful for me. I hope that field day was also successful for you, that you got to accomplish the things that you had set out to do in the first place and that you got some ideas for how to improve. Not only do you want to be able to do better for field day next year, but of course, all of your normal operation, make it a part of continuous improvement so that you are always ready to operate whenever the need arises or whenever you just need to scratch the itch. Share your experiences with us and share this video with others. Subscribe to the channel if you found it to be helpful and make sure that you don't miss any future videos that we have which will help you to be a better radio operator. Until next time, this is Radio KD8TTE.